vitamin D status is associated with the subsequent increased risk of developing non-skin cancer and cancer-related mortality. I'm Casey Johnson, and I'm a pediatric resident physician at Mayo Clinic. The title of our study is Serum 25-Hydroxyvitamin D and Subsequent Cancer Incidence and Mortality, a population-based retrospective cohort study, and the article will appear in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In brief, we looked at a total of 8,700 individuals who had a 25-hydroxyvitamin D measurement and no prior history of cancer, and we followed them for a diagnosis of cancer. Blood 25-hydroxyvitamin D is the best indicator for vitamin D status overall, and the mean age of the participants in the study was 51.5 years, and most were white and most were women. And of those 8,700 included individuals, 761 individuals went on to develop cancer over a median follow-up duration of 4.6 years. And roughly half of those were skin cancers and half were non-skin cancers. Compared with subjects with normal 25-hydroxy vitamin D values, those with extremely low values or less than 12 nanograms per milliliter had a 56% greater incidence of non-skin cancer after adjustment for other factors. There was no association between 25-hydroxy vitamin D values in total cancer or skin cancer incidence. And compared with subjects from the reference group, those with low 25-hydroxyvitamin D values had more than a two-fold increase in cancer mortality. While our study can't provide definite evidence of a causal relationship between low 25-hydroxyvitamin D levels and subsequent cancer risk, it does continue to build evidence that this, re this relationship may indeed exist. And as such, it's certainly reasonable for clinicians to continue correcting vitamin D deficiencies when identified. The recommended dietary allowance for vitamin D is 600 to 800 international units per day, and that should be adequate to maintain normal vitamin D status in the majority of the population. What does this mean necessarily for patients? The vitamin D deficiency is relatively common, and individuals who are at risk should take vitamin D supplements. Risk factors include insufficient dietary vitamin D intake, little or no sunlight exposure, older age and obesity. Future studies should aim to clarify a few discrepancies among reports of vitamin D and cancer incidence and mortality, including evaluation of individual cancer subtypes with larger cohorts. And randomized control trials evaluating vitamin D supplementation would benefit from prolonged or longer vitamin D exposure and longer follow-up times. I hope you enjoy reading the article and and I hope it's thought provoking and helps you in your practice as well, and, and maybe even gets you in, excited about vitamin D research. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.